John was 38 years old when he started the laser sailing. He had a tremendous career in, in snipes and stars and all sorts of boats before then. And I got a call um, in 1970. I was just finishing up school and he said, Boomer, get a life jacket and come over to Bellina Bay and we're gonna have a regatta. I think you'll like this boat. They had a trailer with 10 boats and we launched the boats off the rocks over there, sailed in the same waters here. It was just as nice. And I have friends that I still have from then. Don um, grew the laser fleet in many ways. Uh, Bill Symes got a second. Uh, a kid named John Bertrand got a second and started sailing It did pretty well. Uh, Russ Silvestri, Paul Kayard, and a whole bunch of other kids that were part of the San Francisco laser uh, event phenomenon back in the early days and uh, Don sailing against Don was kind of like a combination of, of Andrew and Al Sargent and uh, Tracy he was he was unbelievably fit he was tenacious as it comes but he was also a great guy that made everybody feel good so you can figure out which guy on <laughs> uh, so and and he's been a lifelong friend and so we started, oh, look at this. So the, uh, the original trophy was this thing, this is, Bill Chrysler made, this is solid stainless steel. And we used to ship them around and give them to people. We don't do that anymore. These are at, can be kept at the St. Francis Yacht Club. And so let's start with the, the radio. The radio fleet, we, we had this because there was many cases when there was more radials than uh, full rigs. This is, this is the same scale, smaller uh, as an actual radial is. <laughs> so um, the winner, the win so far this has been three years. We had Tony Martin and Andrew Holdsworth last year, um, and this year it's Walt, right? Walt, yeah, Walt, Walt Spivak. Walt. Yay! Yay! Congratulations! Thank you very much. We're gonna get we're gonna get some photographs oh. with you guys with Don right. and uh, also all the St. Francis members. At the end. I just also want to give a, a Don Trask story. Uh, so I'm 67. You can do the math of how old I was 50 years ago. And many of you know I sit, grew up sailing at Lake Okaboji, Iowa. And in the 70s, there were lasers in Lake Okaboji, Iowa. Thanks to you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Great to see oh, you. Oh, maybe before. Don, do you want to say anything before we give out the last trophy? Yeah, sure. I'll be glad to say something. Uh, it's great to be here and see still all of these laser guys here. It went back 50 years. Now, that's a long time. Uh, it was an interesting history how it started. And uh, I was a starboat sailor, and we made a starboat. Here was my first fiberglass starboat. I had several wooden boats, and we had done pretty well. And I made this starboat in a garage at uh, the, um, the lumber yard on Highway 101 where you turn off into Belvedere. I rented a, a garage. It was for $35, and I could get the hull mold in, and I had to leave the deck mold outside. Or <laughs> whatever we would do, and that's how we built the boat. It took me three, it took me four and a half months to build the boat on the weekends. And uh, uh, before that, I had maybe th three wooden boats. When we finished this boat, we were gonna take it to a regatta in Miami, the Bacardi Cup. That was a big deal at that time, it still is. And there were maybe 70 boats. And I asked my dad, who was a pretty good sailor in the bay with big boats. Uh, he was 63. And I asked him if he would crew with me. He said, oh, I'll crew, but these guys that hang out over the starboat with this mini hiking, he said, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'll sit on the rail. And if we're doing well in the last race, I'll slide over the rail and I'll mini hike. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was nice. We went, he was a master swimmer. Uh, at that time, he swam all of his life. Uh, he actually swam twice before the Golden Gate Bridge was made. He swam the Golden Gate swim twice. Uh, we went to Miami with this brand new boat. We're doing pretty well. There was 
all kinds, maybe 70 boats there. And uh, at that time, uh, the star class had a rule that you could only wear uh, enough clothes that would be appropriate for the day. Uh, before that, there was a rule, no rule, and you could wear anything. They had uh, big wool sweaters and, and uh, pants, sweatpants sewn together. So you could probably pick up maybe 30 pounds. Uh, they allowed us to wear three sweatshirts sewn together, three pair of pants sewn together, but it had to go in the boat the morning of the race. They had to be dry. Well, that was easy to do at night. We put them in the washer dryer and we could go down to the boat with this bundle of clothes and we'd get in the boat, we'd sail off away from everybody else and we'd put the clothes in the bilge of the star and we'd pull up the balers and the, get these sweatpants all <laughs> really, really heavy. And they, <laughs> before the start, you'd put these things on and I can remember going back to Coral Reef Yacht Club. We were doing very well. And uh, my dad would go to the end of the pool. Everybody else would come in. All these guys would have three races a day and they'd, these big football guys that were crews, they'd go to the hamburger uh, bar and they'd get a couple of beers and they'd sit down and say, oh, three, three races a day, that was so tough. That was really tough, I'm really tired. And my dad would go to the end of the pool and he'd take off the sweat tops and pull down the sweatpants and he had a little small um, Speedo. Swimming, yeah. <laughs> swimming trucks that were really small. Uh, and he would dive in the pool at 63 and he would do maybe 30 laps. <laughs> and these guys, all these big football players would say, who is that guy? Who is that guy there? And they'd say, that's trash old man. Really? God, look at me, really? So that was fun. And we took third in the regatta behind Lowell North and uh, Ding Schoonmaker. Um, that was kind of the start of the star class, uh, my history in the class. Uh, we went on that uh, time we went east, we went, the next race was at Nassau. And uh, we went there and my dad gave me enough time off work so that I could go for a couple extra days, get oriented to the conditions and sail the boat. And we had the boat the first day at, at the Yacht Club and it was right there. And I was having breakfast at the club and somebody crawled up on the trailer and looked inside. I said, well, maybe, it, that's, maybe I can build another boat. And by the time I got out there, he had disappeared down in the boatyard. The second day, the same guy got on the trailer, stepped on the fender, got up, slid into the boat, laid down inside the boat. So I went out and I introduced myself. And he says, oh, I know who you are. You built this boat. And I said, yes. It was Ian Bruce from Montreal. And... Uh, he said, you built this boat out of Airx foam. I said, yes. He said, well, maybe you and I are the only two people in the North American continent that know anything about Airx foam. It was an open cell foam. So if you put resin on the foam before you put it into the boat, it would get soft. So you couldn't, you couldn't, that was not good for a deck or for the hull. So you had to put very hot resin. Maybe it would kick and maybe five or six minutes, and that would close the cells, and then you could use this, and that was stuff as a board, and you could put it in the boat and on the deck. And so we made this boat out of Eric's foam, and Ian Bruce, when he got in the boat, he said, is your wife here tonight? And I said, yes. He said, well, we, we should meet. And after dinner, he said, let's go to the library. I want to show you something. And he pulled out a uh, eight by 10, black and white, and it was a, a laser sailing around in a reservoir that had snow around the cap of the, of the reservoir. <laughs> and he said to me, and I didn't know what, what a laser was at that time, he said, you know that boat? I said, no, I don't know that boat, but I know the, I know the skipper. You do? Who is that? 
I said, that was Hans Fo. Huh? He said, you know Hans Fo? I said, yes, I've seen him in the star class in Europe, but I know Hans very well. Anyway, uh, he said, I just finished 10 days at the New York Boat Show with this prototype that I made. And he said, I just can't, I've been going over how I'm gonna get these boats to the West Coast. I know it's gonna pop, be popular. In 10 days, I sold 125 boats at the boat show. And I've gotta go now back and make a factory and hire a bunch of guys, make some tooling. But how to get these boats to San Francisco? And he said, I think you and I should sit down and talk. And at that time, I had that garage in this uh, lumber yard at $35 a month. And he said, well, you know, you've got that factory in California. <laughs> <laughs> he said, do you think you, you think you could build a laser? And I said, yeah, I think our factory could do that. <laughs> well, there were two of us working, myself and Carl Peterson, and it took us three and a half months to make this first star boat. And that was the start. And then, so I had to go back to, to Montreal uh, to get the license to build the, have the first laser factory in the United States. And we went back and we watched the tooling and the layout and all the way they were building the boat. And at night we would talk about how we were gonna get, uh, how we were gonna pay for the opportunity to be the laser factory in the United States. And uh, finally we negotiated a, a settlement and we got the license to build uh, as many boats as we could build. Uh, and we also got the rights that anything else laser came up with in, in the future, we would also have the right to buy that tooling and build that boat. And that was a, that was a laser too that did come along. Anyway, uh, they sent us a box car full of tooling and maybe 25 boats. And I built a trailer that had 10 boat trailer, boats on the side and stacked away up. And I, the first guy I called after I had that trailer and the boats, I called Chris. I said, Chris, I'm gonna have this trailer at Lake Merritt and we could, I've got to start for these 10 boats. And I want you to be one of the first guys he was one of the first guys that I had called at that time. He was sailing, what were those wooden boats? From okay Dingings. Okay Dingings, yeah. And uh, so the laser just was the right time, uh, the, in the right place. And uh, they took off like crazy. We built, in 10 years, we built 11,000 lasers, uh, a couple wow. of tasers, and we never did get uh, a laser two. And finally, after let's see, after ten years, there was a lot of a lot of problems with the with the main company. And Ian Bruce, after about four years, uh, he had to get some uh, venture capital to continue to build the boats. And they were building like fifteen boats a day. Uh, and after about three months, he missed his payment. To the venture capitalists and they came in and said we know how to run these companies they didn't know anything about boats we're going to come in and we're going to take it over you have to go to the back room sit in the back and maybe you can work in the factory so uh, he got out uh, about that time we continued we built boats for 10 years we also built 30 star boats at the time and we also built 300 J24s. Mm -hmm. So, uh, wow. and it was in Santa Fe. So, some of the, I recognize some of these faces uh, over a long time. That was 50 years ago. God, that seems like forever. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to see that the class is surviving. I'm glad to see that Chris is one of the leaders in the class and has been for a long time. Uh, but it's great to see that people are still interested in the boat and are having fun because that what it, that's what it was about. That's what we built the boat for. We did a lot of, there was a lot of uh, camaraderie in the group. We did things just like this uh, at Clear Lake, 
Uh, we went to LA with this trailer. Uh, we built a pretty good junior program at St. Francis. And I can remember uh, I was able to get to buy a Navy uh, Suburban that was, uh, was auctioned off. And I went to the yacht club and said, I want, we want to get a car for the, a truck for the lasers and I'll give you my 10 boat trailer. And they would put uh, six or seven kids in the, in the, <coughs> in the uh, carry all. And they had a two by four that was about that long. And with this trailer behind and six kids in the boat, they'd take this two by four and I'd put it on the gas pedal and put it next to the seat. <laughs> and the thing would go about six, maybe 55 or 65. Control. That was the fast it was go on the straightaway. That was autonomous driving back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> they developed into a three to one purchase. Yeah. So anyway, it does go back and, and uh, we had a lot of events just like this. So it's good to see everybody still enjoying the boat. Thank you. I'm glad to yeah. see you guys here. Awesome. So, we have the uh, big winner. Uh, so this this winner is the first one to win the radio and then, then the full rig. So Andrew. You hold it, you're strong. <laughs> Andrew, tell us how you did it. <laughs> I just hung in there and went downwind fast. <laughs> so, again, I'd like to get photos with Andrew and Walt and Don, and these trophies will stay at St. Francis. I used to ship them around, but if you lift this thing, you realize how stupid that was. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. Than and then, anybody who's a St. Francis member, we want to get a photo with Don also afterwards. Oh, just the St. Francis. Just the St. Francis member, because we're special. <laughs>